My name is Jing Sakirker, which is the last of the series of names that I've had as I've traveled from country to country. And last Monday, I completed 84 years. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> and as they say here, I'm now running 85, although I don't know how much running I'm doing. <laughs> but you know, um, carrying that many years around with you in this convulsive life makes you think. It's a long time to reflect on some of the extraordinary and inexplicable experiences in my life and makes it very hard for me to decide whether our lives evolve because of a master plan or a predestined game plan or whether we are truly the masters of our own decisions, our own life, with an occasional boost from centuries of innate animal instinct. So I'm talking about not faith, F-A-I-T-H, but fate. Not really fate either. Prehistoric mankind, along with the animal kingdom, possessed very deep-seated and finely honed instincts of self-preservation. However, as we became more civilized and knowledgeable, these instincts became dulled and dormant until, in cases of extreme danger, they suddenly came to the surface and helped us survive. I'd like to share a couple of these instances in my life. As the introduction says, I was born in Berlin, Germany. I'm Jewish. And I was very lucky to have been able to escape Nazi Germany with my parents before the wave engulfed most of Germany. We settled in Paris, where World War II caught up with us. And because we had German passports, we were the enemy. My father, along with a number of his adult male friends, were put into an assembly camp by the French. It was not a bad thing. They were not harmed. They were not um, treated badly. But they were taken away from daily life in the city. By mid-1940, the German armies had marched into northwestern Europe and were coming down towards northern France. We occasionally had air raids, and they were always at night. But we lived in a neighborhood that was so completely unindustrial. It was so completely... Um, a completely, what shall I say, um, it was just a, a friendly neighborhood. It was very uninteresting to German bombers. Except for one little detail, we had a small hospital across the street from us with a very big red cross painted on its roof, which theoretically meant it was to be respected by even the worst of enemies. One afternoon, um, I was about nine years old, my mother had called a friend of ours for lunch and we were sitting in the front room, which was the dining room, of a fr street facing apartment when the sirens went off. It was about 12 o'clock. My mother got very annoyed. She just put a beautiful hot meal on the table and she said, we're not going down to the cellar. Now, the cellar was two houses away. It was the air raid shelter. And whenever the sirens wailed, we were supposed to go there. I suddenly 
got very, very jittery and got very, very upset. And I made such a fuss that the two ladies decided, okay, 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 we're going down to the shelter. We just barely reached the shelter when a very big explosion shook our building. And after a little while, some of the tenants of the building were brought in bleeding rather profusely. When the all clear siren sounded, we went back upstairs and we found that the entire front portion of our flat had blown away. And this lovely dining table, which had been covered with a nice hot lunch, was a pile of shards, glass shards, and wooden sticks. If we had been sitting there, that's where we would have been. So, nine years old, predestination, voluntary decision. You tell me. A few weeks later, the Germans entered northern France, and my mother decided that we had to leave. She got together with another lady who also, whose husband had also been uh, sent away, and who had a son about my age, and the women decided that taking a train out of Paris was not a good idea, because trains were favorite targets for bombers. So we hired a taxi and we drove, but a lot of other Parisians had the same idea and the roads were jammed and progress was terribly slow and we only reached a small town called Etampes where we had to spend the night. The next morning the taxi driver said he couldn't go on any further, he didn't want to and it took us a long time to find another transport to leave. By that time, my mother was a little tired. She said, let's spend one more night here. We'll go tomorrow. Again, this funny tingling. I said, no, no, we have to go now. We have to go today. <laughs> Silly girl. Okay. We found transport. And two hours later, the entire town of Etampes was flattened out because there was a French air base next to it. What was it? Predestination? Will? I don't know. Um, a lot of other things have happened to me which are not life-threatening, but which also brought forward very strange coincidences. During the entire war period, until we immigrated to the USA, we had to spend four years in Cuba. And one example of these very strange, inexplicable coincidences concerns our departure from war-torn Europe. It was February 1942. My parents and I were in Casablanca, waiting for a neutral ship, a Portuguese ship, to take us to the Americas. And after boarding the ship, we were just crossing the main lounge of the ship, when a very weak voice said, my God, Fritz, that was my father's name. So my father turned around couldn't match the voice to any face that he knew, and we kept walking. A few minutes later, the voice came again, Fritz, don't you recognize me? So this time my father turned around, he walked back a few steps, and he froze as if he had seen a ghost. In point of fact, he had. It was his older brother, very emaciated, having just been released from a concentration camp in exchange of German soldiers. So with all these things happening, I still get the shivers when I think of this. And I honestly cannot help but wonder, what is it that really guides our lives? 
So I don't know if I've taken my full 10 minutes, but is it a predestined game plan? Or are we really the masters of our own destiny? As I said, with a little help from vestiges of our animal instincts. I'd like to leave you with that.